Hello. Hello everybody. Today we shall start lecture number 17 on reinforced, reinforced concrete road bridges and we shall take a problem on RCCT beam bridge and then there we shall find out that effect of concrete loads on deck slabs. We have already done for one way slab that means when the bridge is uh, supported in op opposite directions opposite sides that we have done. Now, we shall do it for the uh, when the bridge is supported in all four sides that we shall show you uh, that one. Now, RCC T beam bridge as we have told you this one this is also most popular as we can see for the slab bridge and which we have discussed in the last class also that depth is going to be uh, increased and that you have to reduce and considering that aspect we are taking one problem the design a RCC T beam bridge for the following parameters. So, first we have to give the parameter for which you would like to solve it. One is that center to center span 20 meter that is the most common as I have told you that slab bridge if you consider slab bridge then that one comes the um, comfortable room span I can say and that is say 10 meter 8 to 10 meter that we can say. Similarly, whenever you are talking say um, reinforced concrete road bridges that RCC T beam gutter bridge that one we can say that is your say that comfortable that span that one you can say 20 meter. So, we, are, we shall take the 20 meter span with the carriageway that is 7500 millimeter width of the footpath in both sides 1500 millimeter on either side width of crash barrier that is 450 millimeter on either side wearing coat 100 millimeter loading obviously IRC class A, IRC class 70 are tracked, IRC class 70 are wheel, material say concrete M30 and steel say FE 500. So, this is the one we are considering. So, if we draw the figure So, we can find out that one here. So, this is the one we can consider that B and D S. So, we have and footpath So, according to this, this is your deck. This one is called crash barrier. And this is footpath. So, first question is coming here to support all those things and this portion that carriage way so this is your carriage way now coming to this one here we are talking to support all those things we need a deck that is the basic one and then we require certain depth if we consider so far we have done the slab and then we have increased the depth as much as required maybe we can get 800 1000 also like that we can go but obviously that if you go up to certain 10 meter span other things that you can accommodate you can 
but if it is more than that then it will be it will not at all be economical. So, when that be the case then what shall we do? Then we require something and that one we require and that is one which calls for that means here if we consider this is the one that basic thing required that where we are having grass barrier, then we are having footpath, then we are having carriageway. The footpath can be both this side also or it can be one side also and then grass barrier here we are having. So, when we have that one to support all of them that we require a deck and that the size of the deck that is B and depth D S. So, B means how much B? That B will be equal to from this n to this n I am talking. So, B will be equal to 450 I am doing from the left this is 450 that crash barrier width then I am having 1500 width of the footpath then we are having carriageway 7500 plus 1500 plus 450 so which comes as if we add it this one so 7500 this one this one 1500 plus 1500 3000 so 7500 plus 3000 10500 plus this 450 plus 450 900 so 10500 plus 900 11400 millimeter that means we require this one 11000 100 millimeter to accommodate all of them. Now, the next question is coming here what will be the depth of the slab? This is very very important because we have whenever you have done the solid slab then we come to that one say solid slab whenever we are considering that and there we are getting say 1000 millimeter, 800 millimeter, 900 millimeter, 750 millimeter like that. Obviously, whenever we are going for this RCC T beam bridge or other bridges also. So, we do not want this one will be the magnitude of that will be in that range rather it will be very small, but how much. Now, coming to this one here I can say for residential building we generally use 125 millimeter. Here how much it will be? this one we can provide that depth that we can provide as say 225 millimeter. Now, d s the range where from I have got it to so d s we can it can be say 200 sometimes we find 210, 215, 220, 225, 230, 235, 240, 245, 250. So, it can go in that range it can go. One way I can say that one criteria obviously from the reinforcement the detailing because we require that reinforcement at top bottom in different places. So, it will be crowded for that also you require certain thickness because if we provide 125 millimeter you will not be able to accommodate that. And there, there are other issues creep shrinkage other issues also they are that from serviceability point of view also different that one. But anyway, so major one we can consider that means we can consider this one our objective is that we shall make it such a way the depth will be within this range. If it is at all required we shall go to 50 
but otherwise we shall not we, we shall prefer in that range that means this one is a very very common one 225 is a very very common one you can find out 215 also but uh, one way that designer i would like to say the designer actually prefers uh, some other i prefer in a range of say not in the range of say 230 235 in that uh, i don't prefer i range prefer something in a in multiple of 25 that is uh, that that is my choice and obviously the market is very much competitive nowadays and when market is competitive so um, you can actually if you can save for 5 millimeter or 10 millimeter like that obviously that it will that it will be cost effective so that way it comes also because uh, the 225 or 250 or whatever way I am talking that I have told you that it looks like conservative. Um, but uh, anyway, so that one I feel that one actually saving that much one uh, finally in the long run I feel that uh, finally you are not saving much actually you can say that if you provide reinforcement say different kinds that we shall come we shall discuss in the reinforcement that uh, if you give different kinds of reinforcement and that one itself will be there will be lot possibility there will be lot of wastage also. So, now the next question is coming into picture to support this system what exactly you need. Is it possible that this is possible that only I shall provide two gutters? Why not? definitely we can do it, but the next question is coming as I have told you this B is coming actually your 11400 millimeter. So, if we provide say just let it let us draw the schematic one. So, we can say eleven thousand four hundred. Now, how shall I decide? This is your center to center. this one let us say G S P. So, G S P guarded spacing. So, I shall provide here half of G S P that is a very common one. So, that it will be symmetric half of G S P. So, this one will be then the total length I am making is say 2 GSP gutter spacing equal to 11400. So, GSP equal to 5700 millimeter. So, overhang this overhang let us consider for this one as a B O C. I mean to say B O C stands for cantilever overhang from center and which will be equal to so 2850 this one. So, that means here I can say this one is coming 5700 millimeter and this one is coming 2850 
So, this is the thing we are getting it here. Why I am spending so much time for this? Because try to understand that overhang more means here due to cantilever this depth also will be more. This spacing more means that this depth also will be more. That means, if I say the depth of the slab d s. So, d s stands for depth of slab. So, d s depth of slab I mean I am trying to make say different parameters whenever you are describing a particular say bridge here you will find out this one is nothing but and that you, you can give key parameters and with that you can describe that. Then you will find out another one that here this is another parameter I can say d s e say the depth of slab at end. Similarly, I require at this end also which I can call say d s s depth of slab at support. So, this way we can actually describe this particular bridge with different parameters handful of parameters we can describe and if we can actually make it general then it is very easy to describe that your problem and I personally feel that one day possibly it will come to your mobile and as an app for this type of structures where you have to mention these parameters and your bridge can be designed. And I think it is not too far that I personally feel. Okay. Coming to this one here that means here what I mean to say that these parameters whenever we are talking here this length. So, this length should have optimum value if it is more then this depth will be increased whatever I have told just earlier that we want something between 200 to 250 millimeter that is the one our objective here we do not want to go more if we want to that means if this these dimensions are more like this there is a possibility that that depth also will come more and which is not at all desirable. So, then the thing is that that means for certain kind of span that width we require. So, certain kind of width we require that how many garters we require that is actually very very much important here how many garters we require that what we say if it is a 7500 means actually two lane we are talking two lane. If it is two lane both sides we are having footpath grass barrier then how many garters we require. So, that way we can find out here. So, this is your that one you can say as I have told you B then GSP then D then your D S other things whatever you have told those things you can mention. So, this is your another one this particular one you can consider here GSP that particular one you can consider. So, just uh, let us uh, find out that one quickly without um, going very detail of all those things we can make it here and then very schematic one we can make it. So, we are talking this one as GSP and this is our B as per requirement to accommodate two cash barrier, two footpaths and carriage way we require B equal to 11400. This is again GSP by 2 this is also GSP gutter spacing. So, 
So, we can say 3 G S P equal to 11400. So, G S P equal to 3800 millimeter. And as I have told you the parameter this one we are calling this one as a B O C cantilever overhang. So, B O C will become G S P by 2 1900. So, just to give you show you back. So, here we got it 5700, 2850 and here we are getting here 3800, 1900. So, this is the one we are getting it here for we are getting this one for 3 gutters. So, for 4 gutters just quickly make it, then obviously it will be here in between we shall have for 4 gutters just schematic one let me show you 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is 1 GSP, 2 GSP, 3 GSP. So, that we can consider this is and then half and half. So, we can say 2 into half GSP plus 3 GSP equal to 11400. So, we can say 4 GSP so GSP equal to 2 so 34 5 0. So, then we can get this particular one here and half of that B O C I can say 2850 by 2 1425 millimeter. So, we can make it here further we can make it actually we can distribute that one also 2850 we can reduce it further and we can add something more if we see this one this is coming very less. So, overhang portion we can add our objective is that that we should have certain balance here and that not like that is very small that is not economic. So, that uh, but you have to provide not like that. So, considering that aspect we decide that what will how many guarders we require. So, that way you can say that 3 gutters that we can find out here that as I have told you 3 gutters on the screen. We can have say 4 gutters like that we can make it here 4 gutters this particular one. Also I have told you that haunch there are certain kind of thing earlier one you can find out that haunch actually horizontal 300. Nowadays of course, they give 150 or 250 by 250 like that and those things already we have discussed in the last class. So, this is the one very important that way you can find out. Now, further when we require say 5 or more, sometimes it happens the depth actually that we cannot go beyond certain um, value that is the certain restriction at sight. So, what we have to do? We have to give more number of guarders and then we can reduce the depth that is the one we do it. So, that means, either it can be say 3 gutter for 2 lane, 4 lane, uh, three, three, lane 3 gutters, 4 gutters, 5 gutters like that we can find out and then on the basis of that we can do that. Uh, just for your reference I could say that in building also whenever we provide columns, the column spacing will be such that your slab dimension will be 125, 130, maximum 140 like that we can make for for residential building or building that is the one and on the basis of that we decide that what will be the column spacing in other way that beam facing also. Now, coming to this one here, so now we shall come back to our problem that B and your D S that we can do it. 
So, which we will say the 11400 this one that which already we have discussed that already I have shown you that particular one I have shown you. So, this is the one um, we can consider here and we shall take let us say we shall take 4 gutter that we shall take it and then we can find out this dimension here 1700 that particular one here we can find out here. So, uh, we can consider that we have taken something here this dimension we have taken such a way so that we can increase this particular one we can do it because earlier whatever you have computed here I have shown you that 1425 instead of that we have given that one we have reduced this one and then we can increase this that particular one we can do it. We can find out that one that depending on the uh, situation what will be the depth that we can find out here. Now, the thing is that we shall I shall tell you quickly effect of constant loads on deck slabs that I shall tell you that particular one earlier I have told you that one say on when the in opposite direction that your slab is supported and here you can find out that how we will do it. So, for slab spanning in two directions the moments in the two direction can be obtained by using curves given by M pigot that is called popularly known as Pigot's curve that one we call it actually Pigot's curve. Now, coming to this particular one here what I would like to say just uh, let me draw the figure so that uh, it will be clear to you. The thing is that here first of all we shall take this is a slab panel. In this slab panel it is supported in all four sides and this length say L this length is B. And then we are having this is the tire impression A sorry it should be actually up B and then there is a dispersion that one will go up to the depth and that one say u and your say v. This is the one we can uh, take it and considering that we can find out this one and this load we can find out. So, let us come to this one here the dimensions whatever I have told L and B span lengths in the long and short span directions. A and B dimensions of the tire contact area in the long and short span directions. U and B dimension of the load spread after allowing for dispersion through the deck slab. K the ratio of short span to long span. M1 and M2 the moments along the short and long span. M1, M2 the coefficients for moments along the short and long spans. Mu Poisson's ratio generally taken as 0.15 for reinforced concrete. P load from the wheel under consideration. So, this particular one is coming into picture that one. So, now how that with these parameters whatever we have we can find out M1 equal to m 1 plus mu m 2 times p and m 2 will be equal to m 2 plus mu m 1 to p. So, we can find out this 
values we can find out. So, k will be equal to b by l. So, we can find out that and similarly we can get 1 by k also just I shall show you one um, graph for that for the UDL particularly this particular one we get it for the UDL whatever we can consider here just to show you that values of k or 1 by k and here for m 1 or m 2. So, m 1 you will get it on the basis of k and m 2 you will get it on the basis of 1 by k. So, that means I can find out the value of k and then from there I can value the m 1 this is for uniformly distributed load. So, this is this type of charts available here then we can find out that one also we can consider here that uh, similar kind of thing we can uh, just uh, get it here that we can find out for uh, different kind of things we can say this one also you can say for uh, this is the curve you can get u by b and v by l that particular one. So, one is u by v, b another v by l you can take it for different values of that for a particular value of k, k this is for k equal to 0 0.4 so you can find out the value of m 1. Similarly, I can take it for that k equal to 0 0.4 we can find m 2. So, these two we know that values from the a, b, u, v, b, l on the basis of that you can find out for that one we can find out from this graph m 1 for this case m 2 that is for value of k equal to 0.4. I similar fashion we are having different value for k and on the basis of that uh, you can uh, you can find out and you can go ahead. So, this one just to give you that how can we get the bending moment shear force that we can find um, then bending moment we can find out that it is almost like say 2 way uh, slab in our say uh, given in IS 456 similar person we use it here for the concentrated load you can find out here. So, thank you very much.